Today we'll focus on an essential and efficient data structure known as the hash map. Hash maps are known by various names across different programming languages and contexts. They are also called dictionaries, hash tables, objects, or just maps in some languages. A hash map is like a virtual shelf where each shelf has a name called key and something stored in it called a value. The key leads you to the exact shelf or value you need. A special function called hash function translates the key into a specific shelf number. For example, in JavaScript, we have the built-in map object that encapsulates this hash map. It lets us set, get, and delete key value pairs in an optimized manner. Hash maps are excellent when you need fast access to data using keys. They are often used in databases to retrieve your data or in caching systems where speed is crucial. Many of these utilize hash maps under the hood, offering stellar performance even with millions of entries. And with hash maps, we can quickly insert, delete, or search for a value, usually in constant time. This efficiency comes from the hash function that directly computes the index of the value in the table. You can quickly place a value in the hash map by computing its position using the hash function. Similar to insertion, you can also directly access and delete the value using its key. And searching is rapid also because the hash function leads you directly to the value. However, there are times when two distinct keys, after hashing, aim for the same spot. This is what we call a collision. In cases where collisions occur, these operations might take longer due to the need to search through the collided items. But there are various strategies to resolve these collisions. One example is chaining, where each slot maintains a list of all its entries. And another one is open addressing, where if a spot is taken, we simply find the next available one. Let's see how to create a basic hash map from scratch in JavaScript. First, we need to set the table size and the table, which will store our key value pairs. Next, we need a hash function, which will translate our keys into hash codes. This function creates a unique number for each unique key. We have a for loop in this hash function, but for most hash table use cases, the keys have a relatively fixed small size, so in practice this computation is still treated as a constant time operation, and the hash function is considered to be O of 1. Now to add the key value pairs to our hash map, we'll need a set method. This method uses our hash function to generate its index, and then it stores our value in the table as a key value pair. We can also remove key value pairs from our hash map, and for that we'll create a remove function. This remove function uses our hash method to find out the index of the key, and then it removes the index from the table. And lastly, we need a get function to find a value by its key in our hash map. Again, here we are using our hash method to find out the index, and then we are just retrieving the value from the table. To recap, hash maps offer instantaneous data access by associating keys with their values. Their primary operations, set, get, and delete, are very fast, usually of fun time complexity. While collisions can be a bump in the road, efficient resolution still keeps hash maps performing like super fast. And if you're interested more about how to apply hash maps in coding problems, I recommend clicking on this video about solving a lead code problem using hash maps.